building, developing software is not easy. It is not for the faint of heart. And neither is implementing software. It's not for the faint of heart, right? So if you truly believe it, it goes back to the, thir the third C of conviction, right? You have to have some gusto. You have to have conviction. And even those people that you think do sometimes don't. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Raving Patients Podcast, sponsored by Cloud Dentistry. As you know, I'm your host, Dr. Len Tao, and today we have a friend of mine in the dental industry for probably at least 10 years, maybe longer. Plus, yeah. um, more, more than that, yeah. close to that, Travis. <laughs> a long time. Uh, okay. Um, today we're going to be talking about implementing new technology in your practice, which is a tough thing for some people, but how to exceed, succeed at doing that. So um, today's guest, again, is a friend of mine. Um, he's pretty well known in the industry. Um, so without further introduction, my guest is Travis Rogers. Travis, welcome to the Raving Patients Podcast. Thanks for having me, Len. I'm excited. We've been talking about doing this for years. So for years. I I, I reached years. out to you season one. Season I one. And I, I wanted know. you on the podcast and it never yeah. happened. And now we're in season five and we're finally doing an episode. Well, I, I have to tell you, as your as one of your good friends, I have uh, it has been fun watching this whole thing evolve for for you as well. But uh, yeah, today we're talking about succeeding with implementing new technology. I mean, the concepts are kind of the same for implementing change in your practice, right? And what makes me, I guess, uh, you know, a little unique is that I've helped launch, a, you know, over 200 different products in the dental industry. We've built 27 different products. We've rolled out our integrations with over 15,000 dental practices. And I banged my head against the wall more than anybody trying to get... Uh, dental practices to implement change. So I actually went out and I did a lot of research. So I did about 5,000 personality studies on dental practices. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm specifically focused on innovation and technology. I'm the technology editor for Dental Entrepreneur Magazine. I run the Dental Innovation Show. Um, I grew up in Silicon Valley, always been around technology. I've been in the dental industry implementing technology for 19 years. And sold over $30 million in software in my industry. And, and um, more than anything, I love dentists. I love the industry. Literally one of my trademark brands is I love my dentist. So I'm happy to share what I've learned. I can say the hard way of how to overcome, uh, you know, really the stress and uh, the process of implementing change in, in dental practices today. Well, that, that's a great introduction. Uh, obviously, we've we've worked with each other in multiple capa capacities. We see each other, you know, at the dental trade shows. Thank God they're they're all coming back now, and they're all uh, attendance has been pretty good. So, so that's a good thing for the industry. I think uh, meeting up in person, virtual th virtual part of things got really uh, crappy after a while. So, let's jump right into the to the content here. I know that you you had stated there's three C's of implementing change: uh, communication, coordination, and conviction. So. Can you can you briefly explain um, your philosophy on those things? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's a, uh, and we see this, and and I've, I I came from IBM and Oracle. No matter what size organization it is, it's very similar. But because of the fact, the, uh, so the fourth, the starting C, and the funny part of it is a lot of C we're talking about, which I guess could be crap if you're not implementing things properly, because we've seen good technology implemented pro improperly and it turns to crap. So, um, but yeah, so communication, obviously communicating when I, when I'm, and just kind of summarize that we can go a little deeper into that communicating to your team. So you and I have seen this countless times, you know, a dentist will go, you know, s smart, savvy dentist, sharp dentist comes back from a conference all excited about some new technology that they learned about. They're jazzed, they're motivated, a little anxiety because maybe they hadn't done it before. But if they have not gotten their team involved as a part of the communication plan, you know, getting a proper documentation of what the needs are so it's clear when they come back, even if they're doing it after the fact. I mean, we've seen this, right, where you come back and you're like, okay, I want to implement this product, but I also want to communicate the benefits, communicate with my team, get them involved um, in the process. And so that's the first C, just communication, being clear with your team as to the benefits of the tool, as to why you're implementing it, getting them involved, which speaks to the second C, which is coordination, right? So coordinating, putting together a plan, 
Um, you know, and I have lots of stories around that as well, but we'll, we'll stick to the highlights here. The coordination is key. And um, by coordinating, it means, you know, properly implementing the tool. You know, whenever I, I work with vendors and, um, you know, I've helped a lot of them build their implementation plans and integrations to the dental practice management through my company, Dr. DDS, um, is that, you know, you, you have to put together a coordinated plan. So, and, 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 the, and the vendor typically has done it, right? So lean heavily on the vendor. A lot of times when you're, when a dentist or when anybody is looking to buy something, the first thing that they'll try and do is get a free or no setup cost. <laughs> and you get what you pay for when you do that, right? So if you don't have a, a setup process or cost or something, it's a little bit of a red flag. And I'm not saying, you know, vendors should have a huge setup fee, but it's all time, you know, money and, and process and people go where money is. And so not skimping on a really good coordinated implementation plan is number two. And then number three is conviction, you know, tied to the conscientious personality type, which is what when I did those 5,000 personality types, dentists are of the conscientious personality type, which means they they have a fear of making mistakes, which I don't know about you. That's the kind of dentist that I want. I want my dentist to have a fear of making mistakes, right? And uh, so because of that, they have a fear of conviction. They have a fear of of really coming at the team and saying, no, we are doing this. And, you know, with all the HR issues, and that's really the number one biggest issue in dental practices right now, they're a little bit more conscious. They don't want to upset their, their team by implementing. And so they lose some of the conviction. They lose some of the enthusiasm. So communication, coordination, and conviction. And conviction can come if you do have a good plan and you've communicated it with your team, right? So they all kind of play in and work together. You know, it's funny you mentioned in what you just said about setup fees. Um, and I, I want to digress here for a second because, you know, it's very interesting. So many dentists ask that setup fees be waived. And, you know, I, I work I work with BirdEye, obviously. I work for BirdEye. And um, we, we have a, a 10% cost setup fee. So it's like a one month setup fee or slightly over one month. And when I have presented that to dentists, they're like, I don't want to pay a setup fee. So I've gotten into the habit of waiving setup fees because I think it's a barrier to case to, to even accepting, you know, the product. So, you know, it's interesting. You, you think that you, I, I think your feeling is, is that setup fees should be applied because it means you're having a quality introduction to the product. You're getting, um, you know, all of those things. So I, I was, I was curious what your thoughts were specifically on that. Cause you made a comment on it. No, exactly. So I've, and I, again, I, um, so I used to sell enterprise software. So I, I sold to Oracle, IBM, you know, big companies, right? Over the years. And it's the same thing with them. Everybody's like, I don't like that setup fee. And as a CEO and as, as a launching, you know, as many products as I have, you know, a lot of times we're looking at the numbers, right? We're looking at what our cost is to do something. And if we're pulling out, if somebody's pulling out costs, they're not getting the service. They're not getting the hours that go into that. So if you see just about anything, even a website, right? If somebody is implementing a cheap done for you website, then that's what you're going to get a done for you website that you're not going to be that happy with. Um, and same thing. I mean, you know, we've, I've had, I've had a couple projects, you know, recently even as experiences I have building software and technology, I've had them fail. Um, even even one this week, and I told people building developing software is not easy. It is not for the faint of heart, and neither is implementing software. It's not for the faint of heart, right? So if you truly believe it, it goes back to the third the third C of conviction, right? You have to have some gusto. You have to have conviction, and even those people that you think do sometimes don't, <laughs> and. Uh, so just understanding that is simply a part of your personality, a part of who you are as dentist and not not blaming yourself. Again, it's not your fault. Just as long as you get your team involved, you put together a good plan and you, you know, you really find and work with them on the benefits. That's the key to implementing change. But and don't skimp on the implementation fee. In fact, I would say, hey, do you have a consultant or do you have somebody else that we can hire to help us implement this as well? Because sometimes the conviction can come 
from somebody else, right? So conviction can come. That's why ADMC, SCA, all these great consulting organizations exist. And that's why there's so there's so many consultants in the dental industry. Is it's a it's a good way for dentists and for practices to be able to have a third party come in, not just as experts, but also as like, okay, it's guys, it's not me. It's, they're telling us to do this, you know. So that's sort of the the fourth potential leg of this is bring in an outside consultant to help you ma- implement uh, the change. You know, I wrote an article recently for Dental Entrepreneur Magazine about you know practice management systems being you know really the most important decision that you make as a dentist, right? Is um, is the practice management system that you that you choose? And I, and I and I wrote you know you can check it out. A, I said the most important technology decision you will make as a dentist. Um, and it was, you know, on the cover of the magazine because it really is. I mean, practice management is a big one, but sometimes people don't really like their practice management system, but they like all the little plugins that we have. And that's why the integration side is also very important. Gotcha. So, you know, it's, we talked about implementation of new technology and we will call the practice management software a major piece of technology. It's one of the most important things you said. So as you know, I sold my practice October 1st and the new owner is getting ready to, uh, for the team which has been using Dentrix for over 15 years, she wants now to implement um, Open Dental. And um, they, did a, they did a test conversion on a very small piece of data, so they confirmed that. And they wanted the, the, the team, my former employees, to take a look at Open Dental. And, and, and I spent a couple minutes with you, and it, it's such a change. So I'm curious, you know, and, and the girls who work for me or who work for me, are, I don't think are very fond of, of changing softwares, but it's something that the new owner decided. So... What's the best way to implement these changes in, in a way that the team doesn't, you know, revolt <laughs> on you? Yeah, no, I mean, again, it's, um, well, first of all, you know, everybody has things that they don't like about the current systems that they have, right? So, and Open Dental, and we are seeing that quite a bit. Honestly, Open Dental is, is as it sounds, a little bit more open to, to working with other other in, other vendors, other products. We are seeing people move over there. It's, it's also a little less expensive, slightly, you know, a little bit more modernized, right? But more than anything, you know, I guess what I like to do, and I have a whole document that I work with people on because we've seen we've helped a lot of people move from one system to the other. Um, is really documenting the things that you like, putting together, you know, what's called an RFI or an RFP, which is a request for proposal or request for information creating a spreadsheet, putting them side by side, ranking them, getting demos. You know, a lot of people skimp on on really leaning on the sales teams of those products to take a look at that. But I think once that decision is made, it's also, it sounds like the decision is, is, is being made by the dentists themselves, which is fine. It may just take a, having a really clear rollout process, great communication, planning the adoption of it, bringing in a consultant to help the talk about the benefits and why open dental is, is better. And, um, you know, also finding an internal coach, somebody on the team that also can be a bit of a team leader. And it's not always the office manager, as people think could be a, you know, young, I mean, I hate to say it, somebody that's a little bit more tech savvy is oftentimes, you know, a little bit more, a little bit younger. They're more used to utilizing to, and adopting a new technology. Um, so those are the things that I would say there, um, but but definitely important to have a, a project manager, you know, whether it's a somebody that's a trained project manager or somebody that's internally on the team and do a really good job of training and, you know, understanding, here's the thing, there's so much change and movement in the dental industry, for, even for teams, the fact that they know Dentrix and now they're going to know Open Dental, that's actually a positive thing, because I'll tell you what, almost every startup practice right now is going to Open Dental. Um, so, you know, I hate to say it, I love Dentrix, love you guys, but, uh, you know, it's just the nature of where, where the world is heading. And then we're moving to the cloud-based products after that. And there's a lot of great cloud-based products out there as well. Yeah. I think speaking of cloud-based, I think if you're starting a practice from scratch now, I think you either go open dental or you go to the cloud. I I don't think there's any other reason why not to, um, I think more and more people are going to go to the cloud, but the biggest problem with the clouds is that it's a closed network. It's very hard to get other software incorporated into the cloud as a, as a general understanding. Yeah, they're sort of the all-in mentality, which means that you don't get the best in class, right? You don't get the best reputation management system. You don't get the best of X, Y, and Z, right? Um, Because it's an all-in-one product that's just good enough, right? 
Um, you know, one thing I think, you know, just kind of talking about the different dynamics, everybody learns differently too. So having the dental practices, understanding how each of the different team members learn, I think it's also good to understand their personality types. You know, um, you know, although the dentists are of the conscientious um, personality types, most of the team are, you know, of, of the I personality types, right? And that means they're very, you know, methodical with how they do things a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more, t- you know, team oriented. So it's a different personality type. So understanding that the, the personality types and, and implementing it based on personality type is, is also a great way of doing it, as well as learning, learning styles. Some people are hands on learners. Some people want to watch the videos, um, et cetera. So I, I know you had mentioned, you know, using consultants. So are you advocating that when you bring in a new technology, you know, obviously the company that you're hiring to, to do the, the implementation is going to train you to some extent. Are you advocating and then bringing in a consultant in or, or, or another, an additional trainer in to get the tree more accustomed to using the new technology? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, again, it depends on what it is. I mean, in your case, you're training them on, on Bray and marketing and, you know, a lot of it comes down to the, the why that's maybe above the why that the doctor practice is, is, is at, you know, they're like, well, we like the, we like this this feature, right? But the why needs to be brought up one level higher, and typically that's what the the consultants will help you do is go a little higher into you know the why, which can trickle down, and then finding the why, the personal wins for each of the the team members as well, you know. So those those steady personality types that are the the team members, they they um you know that, well anyway, you get the idea. So yeah, so plan plan to implement it. Take into account personality types, use the three C's, great communication, great coordination, and make sure there's conviction behind it. And then the fourth C is bring in a consultant to help. So so I, I know one of the other topics we want to talk about was ensuring and increasing user adoption. So how do you make sure that, again, yes, bringing a trainer in is great, you know, bringing in a consultant to help, great. But how do you ensure that there's that they're actually, and, I, and believe me, I I was the early adopter for every piece of technology. I was one of the first dentists to have an iTero. I was one of the first dentists to um, have a, the Canary system. I loved technology when I was the owner of my practice. But getting the, the team to, to, to use it consistently is, is, was a struggle in general. So, you know, how do you recommend they ensure using it, the, all the users using it? Can you give some, some testament to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, what what gets tracked and what gets measured, you know, people do, right? There's 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 lots of quotes around there, but that's basically what it comes down to. So, success factors, performance metrics, implementing it, you know, in in the case of a, a marketing system, you know, looking at the analytics, looking at the numbers. Um, we've been working with a lot of um, agencies, marketing agencies. We have a product called GHL Dental, which is a adoption of Go High Level marketing agency product that's built, um, integrated into the practice management systems. And with that, we always include metrics. So no matter what it is, always include those metrics. Um, continue to assess and evaluate and get feedback. Um, you know, and, and maybe even tie some sort of fun compensation model, game, gamify it in the sense of, of getting those teams, um, involved in that, um, from a, a gamification perspective. Gotcha. So I, I know this isn't on the list of topics you wanted to talk about. I'm curious. Can you, can you just share with, and I, you may have touched on it briefly when you did your intro. Can you share some of the, the products or offerings that you currently uh, work with dentists on just for example, you know, I know you have the one click referral. So, you know, can you talk about that? Can you talk about some of the other things you do for dentists so they understand, you know, exactly what's going on here? Yeah. So in fact, let's just share my screen. We'll talk about it a little bit. So, you know, we've, um, as you know, I mean, we've been doing this for, for 19 years and what we've done is we actually like to, um, go out and evaluate every year. I interview about 200 dentists and say, you know, what are your biggest pain points? And the two biggest pain points over the last few, well, recently it's changed, but three years ago, um, uh, you know, up until the last 10 years ago, the biggest issue, number one was communication. Number two was insurance. Number three was HR. And now that's flipped. It's now staffing and HR, but we built a communication tool called one click referral. This was actually the third version of our product. It started out as a product called record link. 
And what we found in the communication area, especially related to referrals, is that they wanted it to be simple and they wanted it to be integrated. Those are the two biggest things. And so that's why we built what is absolutely the, the easiest and the, the best integration out there. I mean, literally, we do the integration for Tentrix and EagleSoft for them. We're doing it for some big organizations. So the data automatically comes from the person that's sending the referral over to the specialist or back from the specialist to, to the general dentist for the most case, and then also to lab. So we were actually the first one to integrate in practice management system to lab management system. And this was originally Record Link, which was um, started by, by myself, my brother-in-law, who's an orthodontist. He was the first to come up with the electronic referral under Record Link in 2003 and uh, just continued to evolve. We built online scheduling. We built a lot of other products as well. I mean, you know, Len, what my passion is, is helping to bring new products to market. Um, and so we, the other the other one was insurance verification. So we we built a product called Verident, um, which is electronic insurance verification that also integrates in with the practice management system. We've built online scheduling. Um, the one of the newest products that we are, are are rolling out to a lot of practices are is our analytics platform as well. So we've got quite a few analytics um, products that we built, and then that GHL uh, dental. And this is quickly becoming really the top. So Go High Level is by far the best marketing automation tool out there. Um, and it's built to be white labeled. And there's a lot of dentists that are rolling this out because there's 15,000 agencies that use it. Some of the top agencies in the dental industry, although they, they call it their own product, actually run on top of this product. So that's the, uh, the Go High Level product itself. Um, but the, the, the latest kind of passion for me is also helping other companies bring products to market. So, you know, we've built a dental incubator, um, which helps bring tools, mentors, investors. Um, I'm involved with, uh, you know, the Global Health Impact Fund, uh, which is developing a, a large fund. And I'm going to be the fund manager for the dental side of that. I'm, I'm involved with Revere Partners. Um, in fact, talking to him right after this. And they, they're doing some great things in the dental industry. So just continuing to invest and, you know, people have ideas. I always say, you know, I've, I've, I've landed on every landmine. So I always prevent people from making, it's funny. I was talking to Fred Joyle last week, same thing. He's like, you know, I've made every mistake out there and I've learned and, you know, I love to work with mentor people. It's, it's the same story for me, right? It's a lot of lessons learned and, and I like to help people, uh, you know, keep their life savings and keep their marriages and all those things, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, I know Jeremy. Jeremy, uh, his episode of the, the podcast was just released a couple weeks ago. So I had Jeremy oh, nice. on here. I think he's doing a great job for the industry as well. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I want to switch gears now, um, now that you kind of laid it on the line, what you guys do. I want to switch gears. I want to do a little Q&A with you, a little different style. Um, as yeah. I told you, I use a, an app called Poddex. And, um, you know, we're going to, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you a few questions here. Um, so answer them, you know, as quickly as you can, you don't have to go into long winded answers, but so what books should you go back and reread as it made a great impact on you the first time you read it? The one thing, <laughs> the one thing. Okay. I've got, I've got a few, but that that's the first one that comes to mind. So I'll keep perfect. These are, I want these things to be first thing that come to mind. What is the smartest investment you've ever made? And it doesn't have to be a stock. Uh, my houses that I've bought over the years, always okay. real estate. And okay. then also investing in myself, and my business, you know, that's, that's I, made me the most money. I've asked, I've asked a lot of people that question and I was waiting for someone to say it themselves. Cause I, that's yeah. where investment should be is in yourself. Um, yeah. if you had the chance to start your career over again, what would you do differently? Uh, you know, I, I, I think with my kids, it's all about, uh, you know, saving more and, um, just continuing to invest in, in education. And I would also do a better job of building great content and keeping in touch with people that I meet along the way. And I think there's so many great tools to do that now. So if I were to go back, I'd, I'd become a content machine and, uh, and, and put out great content. I would tell you, you probably need to focus on the sales part of things too. <laughs> As you know, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in that. So, uh, I know we've talked, sales guy, so you know, we, yeah. we've talked about that a number of times. So, yeah. uh, what would you say are the top three skills for someone to be a successful entrepreneur? 
honestly, a lot of it came down to some of the things that we talked about with the three C's. You got to have a lot of conviction. You know, you're going to be working late nights. You know, I've seen a lot of people give up right at the goal line. Um, you know, in fact, somebody I, I saw somebody do that this week and I was just shocked. It's like you realize this, you're ready. You know, it's ready to go. Don't give up. Don't listen to outside pressure. Or people are saying you you're, you you should go back and get a job. You should do this and do that. Every great person that has ever worked their way through that pain point, they're the ones that are successful, right? Gotcha, gotcha. What would you do with unlimited resources? The limit, I mean, I'd spend uh, more time with my with my my family, my son. I'd travel. Um, I would uh, also invest it in other startup companies and uh, those those that are in need. Okay, perfect. Who do you look to for advice or mentorship? So I, I am blessed to have a close family. My, my, my father would be the first one on that list. He was a CFO. Um, uh, Quantum did, did well and had nothing, absolutely nothing when he started. Uh, my mom and he had uh, only a Volkswagen bug and they drove across the United States and that was it. So I looked to my father, I looked to my mother and also my sister. Um, and then I've got a couple other uh, folks that are advisors along the way. Okay. Um, if you had to open up a lemonade, lemonade stand tomorrow, what would you call the stand? <laughs> well, probably turning lemon, lemons into lemonade, you know, which is one of my expert expertise, it seems. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, and I did last, that last year in my personal life, as you know. <laughs> yes. Um, what do you think will be your legacy? I think uh, the... Well, first of all, my son is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and then the people that I've helped along the way with their businesses, you know, I've, I've, I've helped more people probably than I've helped myself. Uh, I saw Lois Banta yesterday at a show and a couple of years ago, she called me the most abundant person in the dental industry. And I just, I love to share resources and, and give. And as you know, sometimes giving, you need to balance that with, uh, with sales and whatnot, but the abundance. Abundance a, pays totally off. Totally abused word, but you know, it 100%, works. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Travis, if uh, if someone wants to get in touch with you, wants to learn more about how you can help them, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so uh, you know, Doctor DDS or TravisRogers dot com. You know, so uh, just go right here. You can schedule a consult with me. I'm um, right at Travis Rogers with a D. Rogers with a D. <laughs> Yep. All right. Perfect, Travis. Well, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the content we shared today uh, about implementing new technology um, and the three C's associated with it. Travis, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with the office, uh, with me, I see, with offices and viewing viewing audience and listening audience. Um, as you said, you like to break some of these up, so maybe we'll have you back for another episode soon. Guys, if you like this episode, uh, please go ahead and tell your colleagues. Please share it. Please uh, subscribe to the episodes. Um, they come out Friday at 5 a.m., um, every week. We're in season five right now. If you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can go to ravingpatientspodcast.com. And as you remember, don't forget your reputation matters. Thank you, Travis, for joining me today. And we'll speak to everybody soon. Thank you.